Thank you, Helen. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, I actually brought my mentees here with me, so just in case you don't clap for me at the end of the presentation, I, brought, I actually brought them with me today. Um, so good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I didn't actually bring a presentation here because it's just going to take away, I feel like it's just going to take away the drama of, you know, um, of what I wanted to share with you today. But again, good afternoon to all of you. Before I begin my presentation, I just want to encourage everyone in this room and tell you how amazing you all are. You are changing someone's life every single day. I don't say it just to make you feel good about yourselves or you know good about your job, but I say it because once upon a time in Sydney, a lady named Clelia Paralupi changed my life forever. Just like all the students that you come across with every day. I myself was a, was a student at Carrick School of Hospitality. You can't Google them anymore because they don't exist. It's already brought um, by my other alma mater, Kaplan Business School. But on December 2011, I came to Australia with a dream of giving a better life to my daughter, Sophia, who was then seven, and Stephanie, six. I left them with my mom and my dad in the Philippines. Because I'm a single mom, and I can't afford to study, work, send them also to school, and look after them at the same time. Back then, all I wanted were to be the best waitress in Sydney, get my permanent residency, and bring my kids with, with me here and be with them for good. Those were my dreams. Those kept me going, even though there were so many times I just wanted to quit. I just wanted to give up. But I had a purpose. The only problem was, and I tell you it's a big one, I didn't know how to make it happen. And thank God for Clelia because she showed me the way. Why did you become a career advisor? What kind of a career advisor are you? Do you give out a bunch of to-do lists to your students and tell them once you take all the boxes, then they're career ready, they're employable, or do you take the time to be a part of their journey? The title of my presentation today is The Three Things I've Learned from Clelia Paralupi. In 1 Thessalonians 5.11 from the message says, So speak encouraging words to one another. Build up hope so you all together, so all be, so you all be together in this. No one left out. No one left behind. I know you're already doing this. Just keep doing it. Clearly taught me three things. To know who I am and embrace it. To, know, to choose a niche and volunteer. My mentees are smiling because they know this. And to create the most epic LinkedIn profile ever. <laughs> to know who I am and embrace it. We are all unique. What makes one person successful will be different from the others. Looking back eight years ago, success was getting that permanent residency because it meant I'll be with my baby girls forever. No more goodbyes, no more long distance. It also meant being the best waitress in Sydney. So Clelia took the time to get to know me and my dreams. I hope we all become advisors that encourage students to know who they are to identify and embrace their uniqueness. How? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Number one, through knowing their strengths and weaknesses and knowing the triggers that activate those strengths and weaknesses and through identifying their learning styles. Not sure if you've heard of that before, but if not, let me dig deeper. Through knowing their strengths and weaknesses, well, by taking personality tests like the Myers-Briggs or this profile, or by knowing the triggers that activate those strengths and weaknesses. Have you ever asked the students or your mentees what was the best day or the worst day that they've had in three months? They probably, you'll probably be able to identify the triggers of their strengths and weaknesses by asking those questions. As an offshoring manager at Codex, I've created a training class called Bridging the Gap, where I ask our Manila team to identify their strengths and weaknesses 
and compare them to the strengths and weaknesses of their Australian counterpart. Because I want them to be reminded of their uniqueness, that their uniqueness matter. Because I want them to be um, the, to be reminded that they have something to offer. They're not going into a job because they need to follow everything that their boss says. They, I want them to know that even their bosses have their weaknesses as well, and that their strengths can actually bridge the gap to their bosses' weaknesses and vice versa. And if we know what we have to offer, no one left, no one gets left behind. Number three, through identifying their learning styles. I am the chief learning officer at Avodex. I think it's really important to know what our learning styles are. Uh, Chris would always share with us the story of like how he actually went through her his um, chartered accountant without opening a book. It was actually because he learned that he's an auditory learner. What he did is he actually paid one of his colleagues to read the entire book while he listened to it and he passed CA with flying colors. How amazing, right? Are they analyzers? Are your mentees analyzers where they need ample time in the classroom? Or where role play is important? Or when you need to break down performance so they can build it back up? Or when they need time to prepare? Are they doers for trial and error or integral? Preparation is a dry, uninspiring activities for doers. It's when you need to pick a specific task that is simple but real, and for doers, mistakes are the raw material for learning. Are they watchers? Watchers are where they, they actually, these are people who learn a good deal when they are given the chance, where they are only able to see when they view the complete picture, where you need to take them away from the manuals and buddy them up with an experienced performer. Why is it important to know who you are and embrace it? It saves us time. As career advisors, it will definitely save you time because you don't have to spend so much being the person you're not because you know what makes you unique. Time is better spent on things that make you take advantage of your natural abilities. At a codex, we are always reminded to double down on our strengths and delegate our weaknesses. It makes us accountable. It helps your mentees to take ownership of their abilities, practice it, and refine it. It build, builds a stronger sense of team. It creates interdependency. You know that you can't do everything alone. You know you will need others to bridge the gap for you. Once you know who you are and you've embraced it, choose a niche and volunteer. I told Clearly I wanted to be the best waitress in Sydney, but I didn't have the experience at all. So she asked me to research all the cafes and hotels in Sydney CBD, and she encouraged me to work for them for free. I landed work experience at a Vibe Hotel in Sydney, where I believe to this day made me the best waitress in Sydney and paved the way for my big move to Adelaide, where all my other dreams came true. I know we all want our students to have work experience, but believe that they can have the experience they need at their dream workplace. I always say this to my mentees, because I, you know, when I first met Murtaza, I did ask him, so Murtaza, why did you study um, human resource? This is really what you want to do. Now, what industry do you want to be in? Because human resource is such a massive industry. They won't necessarily land or volunteer or pay jobs straight away, but if they know where they're going, then you can guide them how to get there. A lot of students just want a job or work experience anywhere. But let's be career advisors who challenge them and make them dream and work for their dreams. Make them choose a niche. For example, if they're in hospitality, ask them what industry they want to work in. Is it hotels, cafe, bars, restaurants, and let them focus there. 
Make them research what hotels are in the area. Are they willing to travel? What kind of jobs do they want to do? Make a list of at least three to five. Then make the call or walk in and volunteer. That's actually what I'm asking my mentees to do. Theories are lists and lists are good, but nothing beats experience and we all know that. Benjamin Franklin said, tell me and I forget. Teach me and I remember. Involve me and I learn. Trust me. If you encourage your students or your mentees to walk into the company of their dreams prepared and tell them that they want to volunteer because they want to gain experience, trust me, they will say yes. They need help and they don't, and you don't have to pay it. You, they don't have to pay you. It's a win-win. Lastly, know and embrace who you are. Choose the niche and volunteer. Definitely not the least. Create the most epic LinkedIn profile ever. Okay, I must admit, eight years ago, I didn't even know what LinkedIn was. But Clay was so patient with me when I was putting together my resume. She helped me spruce it up and be ready to hand it over to the Vibe Hotels manager. She told me, Lindsay, write your destiny. But four years later, I heard a keynote speech from a guy named Chris Hooper about creating the most epic LinkedIn profile ever. He said, your LinkedIn is your social proof, your life's work, your professional blood, sweat, and tears on the World Wide Web. Your LinkedIn is a summary of your life's work, a glimpse of who you are, and you, and you have the ability to be who you want to be. And everyone in this room, you have the amazing opportunity to touch someone's life and be a part of making their LinkedIn epic. So again, know and embrace who you are, choose a niche and volunteer, create the most epic LinkedIn profile ever. On October 15, 2014, I was finally reunited with my daughters after four years of being away from them. In February 2015, I was asked to deliver the graduation speech where Chris Hooper encouraged us graduates to create the most epic LinkedIn profile ever. And right there and then, he offered me the best job in the world. That's why today, I am standing in front of you sharing my story. <coughs> Maybe you came here today thinking, why you do what you do? Maybe you're feeling burnt out and frustrated because some of the students or the mentees that you are a mentor, you, that you are mentoring, are a pain. <laughs> they don't listen. Your job is getting tough. I came here today to encourage you, to remind you that you are all doing such an amazing job, an important job of molding someone's future. Not all of us will succeed, and that's okay. But there will always be that one, or two, or twenty, that will forever be grateful to you. So thank you for doing what you do every day. Thank you for making a difference. Thank you for believing in us before we even believed in ourselves. And thank you for being part of our crazy, amazing journey. Good afternoon. <laughs> it's it's the most amazing thing in the world. Um, so it's it's actually so I just really want to share with you and expound on that story of how you offered me a job. So in my speech, it's also something like this. It wasn't something where um, I actually shared what. I'm so good at and things like that, but I actually shared about the people who helped me along the way. And after the speech, um, Chris actually got in touch with me, my boss right now, and he said, he asked me questions, um, and then he said to me, Lindsay, I don't have a position for you right now, but I'm the CEO, so I can do it. 
I want you to be a part of my company. I want you to be a part of my team. Would you like a job? <laughs> Crazy enough, um, I was actually looking for a job because my daughters just came here. Um, Chris is such a such a mentor to me. You know, um, Sasha knows Chris very, very well. Um, McKay actually um, asked Chris to do this presentation, but he was just like, Lindsay, you're actually so much better to do this than myself. And I was like, Chris, do you, do you think I can do it? And he's just like, of course you do. So, you know, like, he is one of the people who has believed in me as well more than I ever believed in myself. And that's who he is to all of us at Codex. Maybe you can bring that. Um, a codex and your role within the company. Yeah, so a codex, um, as Michaela mentioned earlier, is a um, as a um, is an accounting technology firm. Um, but so what we actually do is we do have partners with us all around the world. So now we've got partners interstate, we've got partners in Canada, Germany, and the U.S. as well. So what they do is it's kind of like a small. Um, our partners, our accounting partners, are small business owners as well. But what we do as a codex is that we provide them with training. Um, they are very, very good accountants, but all their lives, they're, they've been given jobs. You know, they've, they've been given accounting jobs. So what we actually teach our accountants is the branding side of the business and like the sales part of the business. There's networking as well. Um, and I, I didn't mention earlier in my speech about being an offshore manager, which came in handy for Chris because they're offshore um, office in the Philippines. So I do manage them and they do make um, my job so easy for me. They make me look so good because they're so hardworking. So they do um, do the, what do you call it, the, the uh, admin side and like the bookkeeping side of the business while our accountants here in Australia and in the, and in the US, they um, expand their businesses and they get um, their clients and stuff like that. So as Chief Learning Officer, um, I work very, very closely with Chris in building those training, training programs for our partners, um, for interns, and um, for our team in Manila as well. Thank you very much.